it's not a squat unless it's ass to grass. You need to go as deep as you can go. Your ass needs to be in hell before it comes back up again. Anything less than that is not a squat. Hello, I'm Liam from Lazarus Personal Training. In this video, I'm gonna talk about how do we squat to 90 degrees and do we need to squat to 90 degrees? The first question that we need to ask is, why 90? Where has this number come from? So if you look at it, how we're traditionally supposed to move, how naturally we're supposed to move, the third world squat, I hate that name for it, but that's what I know it as, is basically just sitting into the bottom of a squat position. That's naturally how we should be able to squat. But in a Western and now just in a global scenario where we sit in cars and we sit in chairs, we have limited our range of motion. But naturally, naturally we should be able to sit into a bottom of the squat. In terms of a movement pattern and a strength exercise, being able to squat past 90 degrees means that we have a bigger range of motion, we have more control over that range of motion, it means that our joints go into more flexion and extension, it means that the muscles get more stretched out of it. Overall, I would say squatting past 90 degrees in terms of health of muscles and joints is just a really good thing to be able to do. But that's not to say that we need to do it. I think this idea of it's not a squat unless it's ass to grass, you need to go as deep as you can go, your ass needs to be in hell before it comes back up again, anything less than that is not a squat. I just think it's dumb because I don't think it accounts into what people are able to do and I think it sends the wrong message. A squat should be a position that we can comfortably sit down and stand up into and everybody's body is slightly different. I know for a fact that I can't squat as deep as some other people just due to where my body sits. So does that mean that I can't squat? Well, yes, I can squat. I've proven that I can squat. It just might not be to the same range of motion as someone else. But in saying that, I do think that being able to squat to 90 degrees or more is a incredibly helpful tool to have. And if you can do that, you can pretty much move your body in any way that you need to move it and also be safe when it comes to lifting heavier objects when you might be in a less than advantageous position. So the first point of call is that it might be a technical error. You might not just have the cues to be able to squat into the bottom of a squat. So in terms of the way that I cue people up for squats, one, I wanna make sure that they've got a squat stance that is right for them. That varies from person to person but you might be narrow, you might be wide, it completely depends on the structure of your hip socket. From there, everybody needs to clamp their feet into the ground, big toe, little toe and heel, gripping in, like an eagle grabbing the floor. That gives us foot stability. If we go ground up, we want foot stability for everything else to be stable. Once we've got that locked in place, we're gonna brace his core, we're gonna hold that tight, we're gonna breathe in and fill out. And then from there, hips are gonna travel backwards just slightly, so we open the hips and then we sit, driving the knees out. Going to wherever we can keep a neutral spine, we're then gonna hold just for a second, maybe a millisecond, before driving back up again, pushing the world away, squeezing the bum, squeezing the thigh, squeezing the core. So they're my technical cues for when it comes to a squat. But let's look at if you can do that, but there is something else blocking you. My first point of call would be to see how passively you move in a squat. So what I would suggest is getting a step or a box or a seat that is below your 90 degree level. Sit down on that box and see how that position feels. Can you comfortably have your feet planted where you would squat from? Are your knees in a comfortable position? Is your back set in a straight line? Are your hips tucked under? Take account of what these things feel like. If you're a rounded over ball, well then we might need to work on your mobility in those certain positions and your flexibility too. However, if you can sit in the bottom of that position and then stand up out of that, well well done, you've just squatted past 90 degrees. So it might just need a little bit of training from that point. But let's say we sit in the bottom of that position and it still doesn't feel super comfortable. There will be some areas of your body that we might need to address. If your heel raises up, you can squat down into the bottom of the squat, but your heels come off of the ground, that is probably due to ankle immobility. And as ankle dorsiflexion, when the knee travels over the toes, can be limited. I know that I have poor ankle dorsiflexion. So with that, we need to do some mobility techniques around the ankle to improve that. So ankle mobility drills, doing some soft tissue releasing around that area, just generally sitting in a position where our knee is tracking over our toe will help that. 
you might find that you fall forward. And this is a common thing that I see with people that I work with when they are more posterior dominated. So for some people, they're more comfortable in an anterior fashion. They can squat, but they can't hinge. And then the flip side of that, some people can hinge, but they can't squat. So if they are more posterior dominated, what they might do is squat down, but the ass comes too far back. They end up falling forward or they can sit down correctly, but as they drive up, the bum comes up and then the chest comes up. So with that, I would say that that's probably a quad strength problem. So we need to do some strengthening and some stability work when it comes to our anterior. And then from there, as you're squatting down into the bottom, if you find that you round under, if you lose your spinal position, that is very much about bracing and core. So for that, I would suggest movements like a dead bug or a bird dog or anything that works on that bracing position. Goblet squats are going to be fantastic for that too, but with the onus on bracing and keeping the core tight, tight rather than the weight that you're moving. With that, we now need to ask ourselves the question, do we need to squat past 90 degrees? Again, like I said at the beginning of this video, I think that for the most part, we should all be able to squat past that point. Does that mean that we need to strength train it though? Maybe not. If your sport doesn't require you to go into that bigger movement, doesn't require your knee to flex that much or your hip to flex that much, you might be better off doing squats above parallel to get the most out of your explosive power. Might be the same if you're a runner. Do you ever find yourself going past that range of motion? Probably not. So, do we need to go through that big range of motion in a strength capacity? Maybe not. But I would advise, for mobility's sake, we need to be able to sit in the bottom of that position. Do you need assistance when it comes to a squat? So, if you've got poor ankle mobility, do you need to raise your heels up slightly? There's nothing wrong with this. Olympic lifters use Olympic lifting shoes to perform their maximum effort movements. They have raised heels. But if your sport doesn't have a raised heel and you need to be able to sit into the bottom of the squat, maybe we should be training without it. For general life, I would say it's probably better to not have a raised heel. But if it means losing our squat position, we might need to elevate the heel slightly. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just knowing that that is a variable that we can use. In the same way, I think box squats are fantastic. Either starting from the box and standing up or sitting to the box, touching the box lightly and then standing back up again is a great tool to use. And there's nothing wrong with sitting and standing up onto a box. There's nothing to say that you have to do a freestanding squat. There's no unwritten rule that says, if you don't do a freestanding squat, then you're gonna lose all your gains. If you feel more comfortable squatting to a box, squat to a box. Could you do unilateral work? Do you really need a squat? Or would it be more benefit to you to do some unilateral work? Do some reverse lunges, do some high step ups, do some prowler pushing. I love a prowler push as a, a foundational strength component because it allows people to put some load into their leg without being too technical. So again, if your sport doesn't require you to have bilateral strength and you need more unilateral strength, you might be better off doing some reverse lunges. So always ask yourself the question, do I need to squat past 90 degrees? If you're still a little bit unsure about how your squat's feeling and you've just got some stuff that doesn't feel right, drop a comment down below, I'll get in touch and you can send me a video so I can have a look at your squat independently and see how I can help you. If you like this video and you found it helpful, give it a like. Maybe share it with someone that's struggling with their squat and if you really like my content, please subscribe to the channel, it does help. I've been Liam from Lazarus Personal Training and I will see you next time.